lecture is on otic or ear medication. Here are some anatomy terms for the ear. The pina is the outer or visible part of the ear, protects the middle and the inner ear, collects the sound, and it funnels it through the canal. Glands in the external canal secrete cerumen or earwax, which protects the inner ear from damage and infections. The primary function of the middle ear is bony conduction of sound and transferring it to the inner ear. The tympanic membrane or eardrum and auditory ossicles make up the middle ear. The eustachian tube links the middle ear with the back of the nose. The inner ear functions to conduct sound to the central nervous system as well as to assist in balance. The oval window is at the beginning of the inner ear and it vibrates when bone strikes it. The round window adjusts pressure. The cochlea helps with hearing. In the semicircular canals and the vestibule help with balance. You know the theory with motion sickness is that the body and the inner ear and the eyes are sending conflicting signals to the brain. So as a review, otic medications can soften wax, relieve pain, and treat infection. Even though the outer ear is not considered sterile drops are always used because the eardrum, if it ruptures, non-sterile drops placed in the ear could cause serious infections. When we position the peanut prep correctly, eardrops flow to the eardrum. For adults, the peanut is lifted up and back, and for children, down and back. To prevent dizziness and nausea, eardrops should always be given at room temperature. So otitis externa, or swimmer's ear, is a common infection of the outer ear. It is usually caused by bacteria commonly found in water. Otitis media is a middle ear infection. You know, you can get inflammation and mucus from allergies, which causes fluid to accumulate in the middle ear. A bacterial or viral infection of this fluid is usually what causes this infection. Chronic infections in the middle ear can cause the eardrum to rupture. If the eardrum is ruptured, we should only use ear medication with medical supervision. We may use antibiotics and glucocorticoid combination drugs to resolve infections such as swimmer's ear and decrease the inflammation. Infections in the inner or middle ear may require systemic antibiotics. We usually use our psyllins and our sulfa antibiotics. These are very common. Infection or trauma can cause ear pain. There are topical canes like benzocaine that we can use for ear pain. Earwax again is known as cerumen and it's secreted in the ear canal. It protects the skin of the ear canal, assists in cleaning and lubrication, and provides some protection against bacteria and water. Impaction of cerumen causes hearing loss and pain. It can trap bacteria. Ceruminolytics, like carbamide, are earwax softeners, or Dobrex is the brand name. Mineral oil and hydrogen peroxide can also be used to decrease the amount of wax. Eardrops are the first line of defense and are usually prescribed for three to five days initially to soften wax and aid in removal. Again, the vestibule in the inner ear helps with balance. With motion sickness, the ear can't determine the body's position relative to its motion. So we can use scopolamine for motion sickness. This comes in tablets and dermal patches. This medication needs to be applied, though, or administered before travel. Scopolamine belongs to our anticholinergic class. It works by blocking the activity of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which stimulates the part of the brain that triggers nausea and vomiting. Remember our peripheral nervous system mnemonic SLED, salivation, lacrimation, learning, urination, digestion, gastric emptying. So as you can imagine, side effects of this anticholinergic is dry mouth, sedation, blurred vision, and constipation. Vertigo means dizziness, and it can be treated with meclizine or anavert. This is an anticholinergic medication. 
How this medication works for vertigo, though, is not precisely known, but they believe it's related to its anticholinergic action. It diminishes vestibular stimulation, and it depresses inner ear function. Ototoxicity typically happens when the inner ear is poisoned by medication, causing structural or nerve damage in the inner ear. Drugs known to cause temporary damage include your salicylate pain relievers like aspirin. Ototoxic medications known to cause permanent damage include your aminoglycoside antibiotics such as genomycin. The first symptom is usually tinnitus or ringing ear. There can be hearing loss, severe headache, ataxia, which is lack of voluntary muscle coordination, and balance disturbances. Medication should be stopped immediately if ototoxicity is suspected. Well, this concludes our otic medications. If you have any questions, let me know. Bring them to class. Bring them to the Farm Cafe.